Welcome to part C of the second tutorial about the AG granular suite. In this tutorial, we will talk in detail about the triggering mechanisms, as well as the waveform display and the list generator. As it was mentioned in the introductory tutorial, there are different trigger sources available in the control unit. The first one is based on the Gabor fire external and is a metronome with variation parameter. The period of the metronome can be set in milliseconds, in hertz, or as a MIDI note number. The MIDI note number input is useful if you want to produce synchronous streams at audio rate. This way you can directly control the resulting pitch of the produced sound. The variation parameter is used to randomize the period of Gabor fire and can take values between 0 and 1. 0 means no randomization. If variation is set to 0 0.5, the period is randomized between 0 0.5 and 1.5 times the current base period. If it is set to 1, the period is randomized between 0 and twice the base value. The next trigger source is based on the FTM play external, which is a sequence player. The timing of events within the sequence is defined in terms of absolute time in milliseconds from its beginning. Therefore, four equally spaced events could be defined as a list consisting of 0, 200, 400 and 600. Note that you can use the second text box here to selectively filter out some events in the sequence by setting their value in this text box to zero. In order to better demonstrate the features of the sequencer, I will paste in a previously prepared sequence. The sequence can be played once by pressing the play button, or loop. The speed of the playback can be set in the text box here. 1 means normal speed, 0 0.5 means half the speed, 3 means triple speed, and so on. You can define start and end of a segment to be played or looped in these boxes here. The values are set in milliseconds. You can jump to any time within the sequence using this box here. Press this button to jump again. To stop the playback, press the button which is currently labeled as stop. You can pause and then restart the playback from the same position using the pause button. If you press loop while the sequence is playing in play mode, it will keep on playing and start looping. But if you do the opposite, it will play until the end of the segment and stop. As you can see, the FTM play can be used for programming and playing back sequences and loops, or irregular yet controlled trigger patterns. Another way of programming sequences is to use the trigger multi parameter in conjunction with the delay control unit. Trigger multi specifies how many grains will be scheduled simultaneously on each trigger. Let's listen to how it sounds. The sound is just getting louder, since all the grain parameters are static, therefore we are just generating multiple identical grains at the same time. However, if we use sequencing or randomization in the control units, each of the simultaneously scheduled grains can have different parameters. And by applying different delay to each grain, we can spread their onsets in time therefore generating a sequence. The advantage of sequencing grains this way is that multiple sequences or bursts of grains can be overlapped since they are all scheduled at the same logical time, 
and all their parameters are defined in this instance. Let's listen to some examples. The FTM play can be also used as a metronome similar to Gabor Fire. To achieve this, just set the sequence to contain a single event at time 0 and define the segment beginning to 0. The end of the segment will define the base period of the metronome. Now you just have to play the segment in a loop. You can change the period using the playback speed. Notice that as I change the playback speed, the number boxes in the row here updated their values. These number boxes show you the current period of the loop in milliseconds, hertz, and as MIDI note numbers, similarly to the Gabor Fire section. You may ask why would you want to use FTM play as a metronome if Gabor Fire does the same job. It becomes necessary to use FTM play this way if you want to retain perfect timing accuracy while recording sequences of grain parameter values. You will learn more about it in the future tutorials. As you may have noticed, there are three large toggle buttons in the trigger section. The third one is to enable external trigger source. You can use the external source to synchronize multiple control modules, trigger grains manually from a MIDI controller, or use any other custom trigger source. Now, since you know everything about the triggering mechanisms, let's move on to the waveform display. As mentioned in the previous tutorials, the display can be used to visualize grains in real time. To enable this feature, press this toggle here. You can also manually select the sample number to be displayed by using this number box here. The number of currently loaded samples is shown in the box on the far right. Remember that the index of the last sample will be one less than this number since indexing starts from zero. If a sample has low amplitude, you can use this box here to zoom in vertically. In order to zoom in horizontally, First select the scroll zoom tool in this drop down menu and then click and drag horizontally while holding the command key. You can scroll by dragging without the command key pressed. You can reset the display to show the entire sample by clicking this button here. Now let's select the interaction tool back to cursor. Now clicking on the display sets the position of a cursor within the sample. The position in milliseconds and as a fraction of the sample length is displayed in the two number boxes on the left. By enabling this toggle here, the cursor position will be automatically used as a value for the position slash offset parameter. This way you can manually scrub through the waveform while the grains are playing. You can also collect different position values into a list. Clicking this button here appends current cursor position to the list displayed in the text box below. Alternatively, you can turn on this toggle here to automatically append cursor position every time you click on the display. A list created this way can be then copied and pasted into the list text box of the position control unit. Before we finish, let's talk briefly about the list generator. It is a very handy tool which you can use to generate lists of values according to some simple rules. The generator has three modes, ramp, which generates linear ramps, 
curve, which generates exponential curves, and random, which can generate lists filled with random numbers according to six different distributions. In each mode, you can specify the number of elements to be generated and their minimum and maximum value. The ramp can be also defined with a starting value and a step size. In the random mode, the minimum and maximum values only strictly apply to the uniform and beta distributions, and for the other ones, they are used to shift and stretch the generated values. In this mode, you can additionally toggle the auto sort feature, which automatically sorts the generated list. The row of buttons on the right here can be used to apply different transformations to the list. You can copy the generated list to any of the control units manually from the number box here. Or you can select a destination in the drop down menu here and then copy by pressing this button. Additionally, you can specify the starting index in the destination list. You can also copy a list of value from the control units to the list generator in order to apply one of the available transformation to its elements. This concludes the last part of the control module tutorial. The third tutorial in the AG Granular Suite series will cover recording, playback and modification of a stream of grain parameters.